Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about the most popular ID in 2023, VS Code. And I'm gonna just show you what extension and tooling I'm using in VS Code that make my life much easier. So let's just dive in and talk about all those extensions. So I also have a file open here, and this file is just to just demonstrate some of the things that we do. And if you wanna know more about this repository, I'm also going to just share the link to the video that I was talking about, KSUID, NanoID, and UUID, and comparison between them. But the whole idea is to talk about extensions here. And if I go to the extension, and look at the enabled one, so I have auto open markdown to begin with. Open, auto open markdown, is basically whenever you're going to open an MD file, the first thing that it's going to do is just open the preview for you. So your life would be much easier instead of just going and checking the preview. Sometimes it's annoying, but most of the time, I really want to just look at the preview. So if I go to my project and I open README, the moment I open it on the right side, I'm gonna get the preview. So this is very handy and it's very useful at least for me. The next one is better comment. So better comment is going to give me more visualized comment in my code base. So when I'm going to write comment, for example, if I'm gonna use exclamation mark, question mark, or just using to do or params, uh, like the annotation, then I'm gonna get different colors. So it's really easier to understand and it will be more human friendly. So if you can use better comments as well. The next thing is code spell checker. Code spell checker is actually a very interesting one because it's going to uh, going through your code and just look into every spelling error that you have and it's going to fix it. Well, it's going to just show an error message and then you can fix it. Obviously, spelling errors are not code errors. It's good to have a tidy and correct spelling code before you just push your commit. So let me just quickly check this one for you. You can see now it's going to find the problems and if I highlight it like here and then go to quick fix, it's going to give you some also recommendation. Yes, I want to be this one and here I want to just change it to value. And now we have a better understand, now we have a better spelling in our code base. And if you know that we cannot change something, for example, KSUID is KSUID. So I'm going to right click here, actually not right click, just go to the highlight, quick fix, so if I'm not gonna update it, I can just say add it to my user setting or workspace setting, so it's not gonna just complain all check. the time. Now we have colorized. So if you're writing CSS and if you're styling, it would be very nice to see the, the color of whatever you change with like RGB or a string or RGBA automatically in your ID, so you don't have to really check it. So this is gonna give you exactly the code under your uh, value. So if the value is red, so you're gonna see it as a background red, and that that is actually interesting if it's uh, if you're gonna write a lot of like uh, CSS code. Obviously, Docker is Docker, so it's gonna make your life much easier. You're going to just show you if there is any errors or something. So you can use the Docker for Visual Studio Code. This is gonna be very useful. ESLint is ESLint. I don't really have to talk about ESLint but if you're gonna use linting in your project, you must have this uh, uh, extension installed. And as you can see, we have almost 24 million downloads, and this is gonna be very actually make your life easier. We have Explorer Exclude, exclude and it's going to hide whatever files that you don't wanna see. For example, if you're working with a uh, TypeScript or JavaScript or even Go or anything, you can just hide some files. So if I go to my Explorer, and if I don't really wanna see node modules or VS Code all the time, so I have two options. I can just go and hide it completely from uh, Visual, uh, Visual Studio Code in a setting, or I can just hide it for only this project. So all I have to do, right click, add hidden items. So I'm gonna just hidden item node modules, and now I'm gonna press okay. Now I don't see it, it's hidden. And if you can see, if you go to the VS Code, click here, you can see, so we were talking about the spell, uh, fixing the spell or ignoring the spell for the KSUID, it's there. And also if you just don't wanna see node modules, now node modules also here. So you can just commit this .vs code and then it will be shared between everyone in your team that are using it. So you can just use this method as well. 
Okay. Then it's git blame. So if you want to know who was the last person just changed one line of code, you're going to use git blame. So if I'm in a git blame and be here, you can tell me exactly two months ago, I was just updating this line of code and it was my commit, etc., etc. And then we have git history. So it's going to really going to give you a lot of rich data about your history of the file. And that would be very useful. And you can see extra icons here. So you can just also click on them and see the history. Now, the next thing is GitHub theme. That's the theme that I use sometimes. And if you want to use it, this is also very popular. So it has 7 million download and you can just use the GitHub theme as well. Uh, we have also a Git lens. So you're going to make sure your Git is supercharged. So you're going to have extra feature and extra things in your VS code for the Git and version control and I would just suggest if you are if you are using git which is would be most of the time the case this is going to be very important and useful as well to have and then because I write go code I have go um, official extension from the go uh, from the go team at Google so I have uh, go also installed I also write a lot of Terraform, so I have Terraform or HashiCorp Terraform. If you don't use Terraform, you don't really have to use it. Or if you don't write Golang, you don't have to use Go. But these are very important ones for me as well. That's why I have them here. And then the next thing is import cost. Basically, whenever you're going to import something in JavaScript, it's going to tell you how big is the import or how much, how big is the import in terms of the cost or the size. And as you can see, the example here, they're going to import Lodash and it's 70 kilobyte and then it's going to just change it for example to low dash and uh, that unique id or unique and then you can see now it changed to a uh, different things and if i go to my index.js now i can see for example if i'm using nano id it's this size and then the uuid has a different size and ksuid again you have different size so it's very important and especially if you're looking in the bundle and you make sure you want to use the bundle size is very important which is most of most of the time is the case then this is going to help you to have the smaller or make sure you'll be more cautious about the size of your bundle then we have indent rainbow basically it's going to give you a color when you indent your code so we have the lines and also we have the colors the colors it's just good for the uh, visualization. If you have a lot of indentation, you can use it. And if you don't have that much of indentation, which should be most of the time, most of the time the case, but you never know because you, the code that you're going to check out is not always your code or is not, for example, from your team. So it's good to be able to visualize the indentation and follow the code much easier. So it's called indent rainbow. The next thing is IntelliCode. So it's going to give you, for example, Visual Studio IntelliCode. It just provides AI assistant or assisted development feature for Python, TypeScript, JavaScript. So it's really going to make your life a little bit easier. Not so much. Sometimes it's annoying, sometimes not. But it's going to add values and make sure like and just suggest some sort of like code if you're going to write TypeScript or JavaScript. And also it support Java as well, but that's a different conversation. And then we have IntelliCode API usage. Again, that's pretty much the same thing. It's going to give you more suggestion and, and something around along those lines. We have make file tools because I'm using make file. This is also going to give me extra feature and flexibility if I'm going to use when uh, if I'm going to write make file and in terms of the syntax highlight and all of those things, make files are gonna, this extension is gonna make my life much easier. We have Markdown Preview is another one. And uh, the, the one, the first one we were talking about is just automatic. This one is actually, you need to click on the preview. It's going to give you the, with a bright background and is exactly what is it look like in a GitHub before like you just turn on the dark mode. The next thing that I use is output colorizer. Basically, if you go to Visual Studio Code and then open the terminal, one of the one of the tab you have is output and it's going to make sure the content in the output tab is actually colorized and is much easier to read. Okay, moving on, I'll go to the path IntelliSense. 
path intelligence is when you're going to import some packages it's just going to make your life again a little bit easier we have peacock so peacock is going to give you uh, like you just add like a color around your ide so in a nutshell if you're working with a different project uh, then it's sometimes very difficult to know okay which uh, which Visual Studio Code is which project and it's going to make your life easier. So if I just do this one, Command Shift P and if I just search for Peacock and I can just, for example, choose one of the colors. So I'm going to choose random colors. Now I know, for example, this color is going to be this is specific project. And if I'm using a different project, uh, then I can use, for example, let's Let's just go to green. So if I have two tabs, so if I have two projects open, then I know the green one is project A, the orange one is project B, and I can also choose different colors based on whatever I want. So I can customize it in any way I want. So Peacock is gonna give me like that flexibility. So I highly recommend it if you are going to work on a few projects at the same time. The next one is another Peacock that we have. So this Peacock is actually a theme. So it's just a color theme nothing more I like it and I use it sometimes the next one is polar code so be the polar code is very interesting so you you want to just create a snippet take a screenshot so with this one you can easily do it so you can just highlight your code on the right side you can see it will just give you the screenshot and then you can share the screenshot with others and if you're much into the sharing code and snippets then this is going to be very useful for you as well the next thing that I use is PowerShell because sometimes I write PowerShell code and I found it like uh, just for the syntax highlighting and also it's kind of just uh, fixing if I have some errors, silly errors, it's just gonna make my life a little bit easier. So this is also the other one. And Prettier is the other one that pretty much if you're using ESLint, Prettier would be another library that going to make your life much easier. For the next thing is project manager. With a project manager, you can just have all the projects you have in one place and with one click, you can switch to the next project. So you can see it here. From here, you can just add project to the project manager. And next time you don't have to go and open it through the terminal or just go to the file and then click, uh, for example, uh, open files or something so everything will be on the left side and it would be much convenient if you're going to use it so the next thing is shell format with a shell format is going to support like these extensions and these file types and mostly are about like the syntax highlights and if I'm doing like for example again a silly mistakes is going to really help me before just all the time testing my code so this is also another um, extension that I use if I have to just work with these files. Then I have to do highlight. And uh, to do highlight is going to show me a list of what well, it's going to highlight the to do's and fix me. So if I go to my project and if I go, for example, to KSUID, uh, KSUID, if I have fix me, you can see it just changed the color. And if I go to nano ID, if I have to do, it's going to just highlight it basically for me. Okay, moving on. I have to do three. So if I have a lot of to do's and fix me's and all of these things in my project, it's easier if I see the list of them. So and in order to see the list, basically I click here. Once I install the extension, then I can see them everywhere in my project. So I have in case you already have a fix me, uh, it's just have the label of example of fix me. And in nano idea, I have a to do. And if I click there, it will take me to the line. Okay, so that's that's interesting if you're working on a very big project and you need to check them all the time. And then I have Turbo console log. So the Turbo console log is very interesting. If you're using JavaScript or TypeScript quite a lot and you need to do the console log, you know the pain. So every variables that you want to do it for debugging or any other purposes, you just need to type it. You can have a snippet, but the easier one is to install Turbo console log. So all I have to do is to highlight what well, or stay on a variable and then so control alt and l and as you can see it will generate this line of console logs it will tell me that's the file name that's the line name that's the variable name and that is the variable itself so i'm going to just do it one more time control alt l control alt l it will just do it for you whatever you are it just 
make your life much easier. So and then we have TypeScript Hero. TypeScript Hero is just another one that will make your life a little bit easier. With the TypeScript, if you're going to import a lot of uh, libraries, it's going to sort them and remove unused one. If you have removed the code and you forgot to remove the import, it's going to clean it for you. Basically, TypeScript Hero is going to just make your life easier, very specifically with the imports. Sort them and do the, uh, or remove the unused one. And then we have VS Code icons, which is gonna just, would be very nice for visualizing. So on the left side, as you can see, when it's apply it, we have some sort of like icons on the left and it would be better for visualization. And then the last two is wire it. And I use wire it to organize my uh, package.json scripts. And wire it is going to help me with the syntax. So I use wire it as an extension here as well. And the last one is YAML syntax. So if I'm writing YAML file, it's also good with the uh, uh, detecting errors or indentation, styling issues on the uh, YAML file. So with this one, a lot of problems would be sorted. As you know, YAML file are not gonna cause problem until you run it and then you realize that, okay, there is not enough indentation, there's a problem. Here, you're gonna just know everything before you go and use the file. Basically, here are the list of extensions that I use in VS Code mainly for TypeScript and JavaScript. Just one or two of them, I use them for Golang because Golang comes everything under the official extensions, but with the JavaScript and TypeScript, everything are available as I have shown here. So you can go and download them and just probably make your life at, to some degree easier and better. So if you like these kind of videos, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel, and I'm gonna put more content soon. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.